Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with a review of a portable interface for you guys. So today we're looking at this guy, the Shure X2U XLR to USB signal adapter with headphone monitor. If you do want to pick this guy up, it'll set you back around $100. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. For this review, the interface is connected directly to the Rode NT1 with my gain set at around 50%. I'm not completely sure because there are no markings, but I won't do any post-processing like compression or EQ, but I will likely boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. You're obviously going to get the interface. You get a USB cable. You get two Velcro straps, you get a nice carrying pouch, and you get some documentation. As far as the build quality, this thing feels excellent, which is exactly what you'd want out of a travel interface. It has an all-metal construction and a decent amount of weight to it without being burdensome to throw in your bag while traveling. On the front, the first thing you'll find is a light to show you if you're getting a signal or if you're clipping. Next, you'll find a microphone gain control. Then you'll find a headphone volume control. Then you'll find a mix dial to mix between the zero latency monitoring and the computer playback. Then you'll find a 48 volt phantom power switch. You'll find a light to indicate if the phantom power is on or off. And you'll find a light to let you know if you are plugged in and getting a connection to your USB port. On the left hand side of the device, the only thing you'll find is a 3.5mm headphone jack which does offer latency free monitoring as well as computer playback. On the top you'll just find the XLR port, on the bottom you'll find the USB port, and then on the back you'll find these two slots that allow you to put the Velcro straps in them and mount it to a microphone stand. As far as specs, this thing has a bit depth of 16 bit, a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz, plus 48 volts of phantom power, and 50 dB of gain. Now in order to measure the noise floor of this interface, I'm using the same method that I used on the Audion ID4, and I'll go ahead and link the methodology up in the left hand corner. Now I have the SM7B connected to the XTU using an XLR cable, and I do this because the SM7B is a notoriously quiet microphone with a sensitivity of around negative 60 decibels, and I want to see if the XTU is capable of driving this microphone, and what kind of noise floor is there when we are driving this microphone. Now I have the XTU connected to my computer and we're looking at the latency of this device in Logic Pro X. You can see that with an I.O. buffer size of 128 samples, we have a round trip latency of 12.5 milliseconds or an output of 5 milliseconds. Drop down to 64 samples, we're at 10 milliseconds or 3.5 milliseconds output. And if we bump up to 256, we have 18.5 milliseconds round trip or 8 milliseconds output. So as far as portable interfaces go, I guess it's okay, but I'm just not 100% sold on it. But in terms of pros, it is extremely portable, it does have a great build quality, it offers zero latency monitoring, it offers the ability to mix between the zero latency monitoring and your computer playback, it offers plus 48 volts of phantom power, and it is bus powered, which is extremely convenient, especially for a portable interface. And then in terms of cons, the preamp on this thing is pretty noisy, the A to D converter is limited to 16 bit 48 kilohertz, and if you have this thing plug directly into the microphone like I have right now it's going to be very difficult to see the metering light so if you do want to utilize that light you would need to throw an XLR cable in your travel kit as well so would I recommend this thing I, I'm honestly on the fence I mean as far as portable interfaces go this is insanely full featured and it has almost everything that you could possibly need for a single microphone recording so even though it does lack a bit in the preamp and A to D converter department, I think if you're just taking this with you to record music demos or as a backup for your podcast, I think it would be a fine option. But if you are trying to record super high quality audio with a dead silent noise floor in the studio or on the road, I just don't think this thing would cut it.
All right, guys, that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. If you want to influence what I review next, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcast. There's a cast a vote there. Want more videos? Logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server. Link in the description, and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.